Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. Uh, this video is going to show you some techniques and um, I hope that you enjoy them. I have enough techniques to do a second video and working on a third one. So if you don't see a technique in here that you're hoping to see, please let me know and I will work it into another video for you. But on this one, I think I'm going to work on showing you how to do a resist with paint. Um, how to use alcohol to create a cool background, to do a leather look technique. I'm going to show you how to do a quick wash over a painting that you've already completed, but you feel like it needs a little more pop of color. And I'm going to show you the way that I do floating. That was one that was uh, requested. So uh, I am going to show you that. And I have a whole lot more that I'm going to be showing you on some other uh, technique videos. I know for sure I will do a second one because I have enough footage to do a second one for sure. So if there's anything you want to see me do, be sure and leave it in the comments. But for now, let's start on all these techniques. Okay, for this prep video, I'm going to show you how I did the resist on the top of here to get this to look really old and aged. And I'm also going to show you how I did the photos on the side of the box. So the first thing that we want to do is use this because that's for another project. I've got my um, surface painted black. I want to take some Vaseline here, or some petroleum jelly. Vaseline is a brand, so just some petroleum jelly. Let me grab a little palette knife here. I'm just going to use this plastic knife so I don't have to stick my finger in it. And I'm just going to find some places that I want to maybe have. I really like it to be chippy on the edges. that and you just put it in all the places that you, you when you're done painting it you want to remove the paint okay pretty easy you don't have to put it on very thick that's probably way thicker than I need to have it on and then I'm going to take my turquoise blue which is the same color I painted the box In my brush and I'm going to apply a coat of this paint right on top. You see it's already resisting the paint a little bit. It's almost like the crackle stuff that you put on. I'm just I'm laying the brush on and just kind of scooting the paint on there. So you can already see where it's it's not touching very much. And then when it's dry, I'm just going to take a um, baby wipe and wipe off all of the excess paint that I don't want on there. So while that is drying, let's do a photograph. So again, I painted my surface black because that is the color that... Um, I had painted the box and my pictures are black and white so I had painted the box black years ago I painted this box years ago <laughs> so anyway we're going to apply this picture now I printed this picture off on my um, laser jet printer okay um, I think you can do it on an inkjet but I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm gonna take my decoupage for napkin. This one, I better shake it up. Um, this is my second favorite one from DecoArt. My favorite one was the one for paper, but I think they discontinued it, and this is the closest they have to that one. And I like it because it's a little bit thinner. They also have an outdoor one that I really like. Used, so I'm going to apply a generous amount on here. 
don't want it to be oozing off of the edges. Okay, then I have to apply a coat of this to the back of this pitcher. And this is just copy paper. It's not anything special. Okay, then I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to grab a second piece of scrap paper because I don't want my pitcher to stick to that. And I'm going to put it on here. I want to line it up to the top and try and get both of us on the surface. Don't press it down till you're ready because once you have pressed it down, it is stuck on there. I'm going to flip it over and see if I have it lined up at the top, and I do. So I'm going to very gently smooth that out. Remember, this is copy paper, so you cannot get too wild and crazy with it. Okay, I'm going to go to there with it. I'm going to apply a coat of the um, decoupage on top. And then this I have to let dry. It's got a couple of air bubbles in it, but as it dries, try like the camera. As it dries, the air bubbles will um, kind of just disappear, and um, you should have a flat. I'm going to lift this off of here because I don't want. I'm going to set it on top of my petroleum jelly so it can dry without um, sticking to something else. Okay, so I need to get those dry. I'll come back and we'll finish them up. Okay, so my uh, pitcher is dry on here, so I'm going to take this very thin blade and just cut around my surface here. A very sharp, thin blade is going to do good and if it is not a good sharp tip then it is just going to tear your paper and you definitely want to make sure that your paper is dry and wouldn't this make just a really cute keepsake ornament so now it's done. You can also antique around the edges. Float a little black would be very pretty. Um, but I like to finish mine off with the um, So Soft varnish on this type of thing because it says on here, it is soft to the touch, extremely durable matte finish. Used as a top coat over acrylic paint, resistant to household cleaning chemicals. So that's why I like to use it on stuff, especially if it's going to be handled a lot or wiped or anything like that. So a coat of this on here and this ornament is ready to go. You can paint the top up pretty silver and um, that ornament is good to go. So now we're going to um, do the uh, resist. And I used a cutting mat to cut that. Make sure you don't cut on top of your tabletop. And the Vaseline is already coming off, or petroleum jelly <laughs> is already coming off. You can see it on here really well. And I generally only put one coat of paint on here because um, I want that look of it not being um, completely painted where the paint is chipped off. So this is how you get that look on here. all of your Vaseline stuff, petroleum jelly stuff. That's a hard habit to break there. You can just use a wet paper towel as well and do this and you get this beautiful resist on here. And you can scrub away as much paint as you want around that um, where that petroleum jelly was because the paint is a little bit weaker around there, so you can scrub it off very easily. And that's how you get your little resist. You can do as little or as much as you want. On this one, I mostly did it on the edges, and this might have been Indian turquoise, because this looks not quite as dark as that. Indian turquoise is not quite as dark as 
just turquoise blue. Um, but all these places where there's no paint, that's where I put the Vaseline. In some places I put it on really, really thin, just a very thin, tiny little mount on there. And that's how I got these places that are a little bit lighter um, than these big open places like I did on this one. I did a lot of Vaseline, so it, uh, petroleum jelly, so it uh, took off more more paint in those areas but if you want just a tiny little bit you can even use your paintbrush and use a paintbrush and just paint some uh, small areas on here I have done that too and uh, you'll get that beautiful um, finish like that that looks worn and aged and then your photos are on there so that is that technique so let's move on to the next one Okay, our next technique, I'm going to show you how I did the background on this piece. I did it in two different colors. This is a, a lighter red than this one. This one's a really dark red. This is one of those paper mache boxes that I got at Hobby Lobby. And then this is a surface from my website. So you can see the difference in the two. And it's based clearly on the background color and uh, how much uh, of the technique I applied to the top. So, to do this technique, I've got a small surface here that I have painted burnt orange. I thought it would be fun to do an orange color for Halloween. And I want a color on top of it. Now on uh, these surfaces over here, I did white on top of it. I think I might have done um, white, on, white on this one. And this one might be warm white, maybe. It doesn't quite look white. So um, you can use any color that you want based on your undercoat color. So I'm going to try bright orange and see how I like that. A little bit out here on my plate. And now I want to take some water and thin this down and make it pretty thin. We don't want this paint to dry very quickly when we apply it, so we need some water mixed in here. So that when we get ready to do our technique, we can. I've got a small disposable cup here and I'm going to put some rubbing alcohol in it little bit in there all right so now I'm going to take this and maybe just a tiny bit more water I don't want it to dry very quickly and the water is what helps give it the effect that we're going to be doing on here so I'm just going to brush this on nice good coat here Now I'm going to take my alcohol and I'm just going to use a rake brush here and load my rake brush with that rubbing alcohol and begin spattering it on my surface. And depending on how big your drops are will depend on how um, many cell type things that you get. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I have my background like I want it. And you can layer on top of this one. You can add another thin coat of orange after this dries. And that was a lot right there. So it's gonna make a big area. This is not a very big surface, so it won't take very long to, to do, but isn't that so fun? I love it, I love it. I could have put more paint down here, more of that wash of paint down here. But this will be a super cool background to do for a, a Halloween project. So um, you just let it dry and then paint on it just like you would any other base coat. And you get this beautiful effect in the background. So that's that fact, that uh, technique, I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, it's just one that I played around with and, and did one time. So there you have it. Alcohol spattered into some wet paint. Let's go to the next technique. Okay, our next technique is going to be this leather look 
that I have done here. Um, I've done it on this little banner thing and I've also done it on this box of coasters. I did the entire box, well except for the bottom, and I did four coasters inside and they all are this leather look. Such a fun technique to do. I can't get them in there. So I am going to show you how to do this technique. Okay, I'm going to do it on a. Um, that out of the way. I'm going to do it on a lid for this bowl. Now this is just a bowl that I got at the dollar store. I've had it for several years. I bought three of them and I had my husband cut me a lid for this. Okay, so um, I am going to do it on this. Now I'm going to do this one in blues because these are the colors that are in my home. I have blues and light teals and grays in my home. So um, I'm going to do this so that I could possibly use it around my home. So this has a hole in it because I originally was going to, I had when my husband cut it, I had him put a hole in it because I was originally going to put a, um, a handle on here, one that had a bolt that came through and I was going to cut the bolt short and just put a decorative handle. But since then, <laughs> well since I took it out the other day, I'm going to use this little uh, foot thing that I got at Hobby Lobby in a bag. I've had this for many years too, so I don't know if you can still buy these or not. I just happened to have one in the drawer, so uh, I grabbed it out. I think I used them for feet on something else that I did uh, a long time ago, and this was one that I had left. So I don't like to get paint all over my hands. I'm going to put a dowel rod in the end of it. I have already applied multi-purpose sealer to this. This had multi-purpose sealer underneath it. I was originally going to do it the same color as this. So I had painted it Tuscan red because that is the base color that I used there was Tuscan red. But I decided I'm going to do it blue. Same technique, doesn't matter what colors you use. You just need your base color, you need a dark color, and you need some kind of metallic color. So this is going to get painted gray and then I'm going to paint it with Extreme Sheen to make it a silver knob and then I'll probably antique it with a little bit of black or something. I could use this knob as well. This is actually, goodness it's slippery, this is actually a, a knob that takes a uh, bolt or something in it and I could use that on there. That would be a cute one but I think I just want this little bitty knob on here because I want the design, the surface to be the part that everyone sees. So, so to get this to look like this, only a different color, the first thing that we do is apply our paint on here. And I have applied Indian turquoise. I've only applied one coat on top of that Tuscan red that I had on here. So I'm going to apply a second coat. I'm going to add a little bit of water into my brush with this. I'm just going to grab an old brush. Don't need anything um, good or fancy here. Just grab an old base coating brush. I always recommend that you use an older brush when you're doing your base coating. A good one, but one that you don't have to worry about messing the bristles. I think I put enough paint out there for three of these. So I want to get this nice and wet on here along the edges because I'm going to be taking this over the edges here. And I need this to be wet. Now you could also use decoupage medium, but uh, I found this a very good technique. This is the way I did it on the other ones over there. Um, for if you don't want to use decoupage medium or you don't have any, you know you can always make some decoupage medium in a pinch out of some glue. So then I'm going to take this piece of tissue paper, and I probably really only need about half of it, but I'll just use the whole thing. I'm going to kind of wad it up and get some wrinkles in it. Make some room here. I'm going to roll it back out and lay it down on my surface. Spread it out. I'm going to have to poke a hole for that. I want to make sure I get it around the sides. 
stick it to my surface. I'll come back and cut all this excess off later. So just get it on there, rub it down. Just want to make sure it's good and tight on those edges. When I cut it off later, I don't want to have any issues. So now I'm going to take my thinned down paint here and apply a coat over the top of it. not got paint very good on that edge because it's not wanting to stick down so I want to make sure I get a good amount of this watered down paint on here you could cut this beforehand and cut it to fit I'm just going to pull it taut all the way around And we will let this dry. See, it's already coming off right there. That that's good. You want it to do that. You want it to um, come off easily like that. So it's just white tissue paper. Okay. So I want this to get dry. Let's see if I can go ahead and pull the rest of it off. Okay, good deal. I'm going to take my paintbrush and make sure that is down and stuck well. And any loose pieces that we have, we can come back and cut them off later. And I think I might go ahead and grab a toothpick and poke a hole in the center. I don't really need that hole because I'm not um, putting, you know, a screw down through here, but I'm going to poke it through anyway. That will tell me exactly where I need to put my handle my knob when I put it on here. That's, that's a little raise there. I'm going to push some of this down with my fingers. I want it to be pretty smooth. I don't want to have any raised places. So just push it down gently with your fingers. This is a super easy process here. All the wrinkles in there but it doesn't need to be raised and puffy so don't let it be raised and puffy go ahead and take your fingers and kind of smooth it out don't rub it too much because you'll start dissolving the paper it's just a gentle little push to push the air out okay so now this needs to get completely dry so that we can go and do the technique on top of this Okay, mine is just about completely dry. You really want to wait till it's good and dry before you uh, attempt to do anything to it. Uh, now I'm going to put some decoupage on the top because I want to rub and scrub on this and if I do it without this on top of it, then it will probably tear this tissue paper. So I'm going to use the one for napkin and I'm just going to apply a coat this onto the surface and let it dry. If you don't have this, you'll want to use a matte decoupage medium. But you don't have to have this in order to get your tissue paper to stick, but you can use this instead of just using the paint on there. just wanted to show you another way that you could stick your tissue paper down but if you're going to be layering paint on top of it especially if you're going to be rubbing and stuff and the technique that I'm going to be doing 
it needs to have the decoupage on top of it. So now we'll let this dry and get ready to start making it look like leather. Okay, I've let this set for quite a while. It is completely dry. I wanted to show you this box that I used here is this box or a box like it. This was a brown one, but this comes from Hobby Lobby. The top is kind of textury, just very slightly, which makes it perfect for painting on. So I generally just um, paint a, either a household gray primer on it or gray sky and go to town, just start painting. Um, but they have them out in the fall and you can get it in this light orange color or a darker orange color, a green and a brown, I think, and a yellow, a, a golden yellow. So I generally pick them up when they start clearancing them out. And they're great for even if you just put a gift inside of. Great for painting up and putting a gift in. Okay, let's go back to this. So my decoupage that I put on there is dry. I want to put another light coat of Indian turquoise on here. Just a quick, quick coat. Don't be too uh, worried about how how well this goes on here. We just want to get a quick coat on here. I want that to dry a little bit. The, um, the button here that I made for putting on the top, I painted with gray sky and then I put some extreme sheen or just the silver metallic paint will be fine. I put a little bit of Payne's Gray on it, just kind of aging it up a little bit so it wouldn't be quite so bright, but we'll see how that works. I may end up painting it a completely different color by the time I'm done here. So this is getting dry. Oh, and when I apply it on, I'm going to use some E6000 uh, Clear. Um, you could hot glue it on, but it could eventually pop off of there, so <clears throat> depending on how, how much the... Uh, design is handled. So on these two surfaces here it has these um, dark colors in it and it's got some gold in it metallic. So how I did that is for this color because I based it with with um, Tuscan red is I used um, some soft black and use that around the edges and just lightly tapped a little bit into the center and then took my gold and did the same thing and then marked off for my gold stripe and painted my gold stripe. So with this one since I'm keeping it blue I want to do this with some blues. I don't know how well this is going to work but I'm going to give it a shot. So I want to try it with some <clears throat> Payne's gray because it's a darker color and it is got a blue tint to it but if I don't like it I might try this tropical blue which I'm not sure this color would work as well but it might it depends on what kind of leather look you're going for so I've got my damp sponge and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Payne's gray on my sponge here And it's damp because we're going to need the water edge over here. And I'm going to start putting some of this on the edges, taking the water edge and kind of blending it out. I'm going to make this whole entire edge here. This paint's gray color. And bring it up onto the top and just kind of work that in very softly and gently just kind of working that in a circular motion and then I'm taking the water edge and smoothing it and working it out I'm going to go a little bit into the center here because I don't want a, a 
great big bright blue area in there. little bit darker out here because I want it to be really um, a weathered leather look. And that is looking pretty good. So now I want to take some of my silver, my extreme sheen or whatever silver that you're using. I'm going to use some of that on my sponge. I'm just going to go over here to this edge. Get a little bit of that. And I just want to skim this on here. I don't want um, I don't want to lay it in or rub it in or anything. I'm skimming it kind of across and letting it catch on some of those um, wrinkles in high places. I'm going to flip my sponge over now so I can very gently blend that a little bit over here. Flip my sponge over and blend it. This is how you can get some of those really fun textures in here. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of that Payne's Gray in here. I really like for it to be darker on the outside edges. I think that gives it more of a worn, handled, a lot kind of look. So this is that Payne's Gray. some of my silver. I want a little bit more of that silver in there. And just kind of go back and forth until you've got it looking like what you think is appealing to you. You can always come back with some of your base color too if you feel like you're getting just way too carried away with some of these colors. And if you get too much, it's very easy to take off. Just take a wet paper towel and begin removing very lightly some of that paint off of there. But it needs to be a wet paper towel. This one's wet right here. So this will help you lift some of that off if you get it too dark and you don't quite like it. And I think that looks beautiful. I'm loving the colors and the texture. I want it to get dry. I'm going to sand a little bit on this edge. I'd already painted the back of it black, but you see i got paint all over it, so I'm going to have to repaint that. But I want to tell you how to make it um, food safe. If you're going to put it, there's my little knob on there. I think that's going to be cute on there once I glue it on. But this has to get completely dry. So I want to tell you how to finish this once it gets completely dry. The top of it you can varnish with anything. Okay. Just a, a couple of coats, two or three. I would put three on it personally. Um, and I use a damp sponge like this because you get nice thin layers on there. It will dry quickly and three coats will take no time whatsoever. Now, if you're doing coasters like this, you want to use a, um, like the decoupage for outdoors. You want to use this. I'd put two or three coats of this on there. Three, I would say three would be the minimum if you're going to use it as a coaster. You can always do more. On the underneath, we want this to be food safe in case we have candy that's in here that is not individually wrapped. So I will varnish it with my um, soft touch varnish, OK? 
okay because it doesn't have a whole it doesn't really have any sheen whatsoever to it and I love this varnish and then when it is dry I will come back with my Clapman's beeswax and apply a couple of coats of this on here you apply one coat and rub it in and then let it set for a little bit and then buff it let it dry completely and then put another coat on it that makes it food safe okay I wouldn't go with just one coat of the beeswax I would put a couple of coats on there but I think this this uh, blue leather look turned out so pretty I really like it so you can use any colors in your palette in your home that you like this is going to go beautifully in my home because these are colors within my home and um, just have fun with it I think once it's it's all put together and varnished and depending on what kind of look you want if you want a matte look you you go with this I think I want it to be shiny so I'm gonna go with a more um, satin or gloss varnish on it this has um, think a satin varnish on it it might have gloss I can't remember what I put on it it's very shiny so I can't really tell but my coasters have a uh, polycrylic minwax polycrylic on them probably about four coats on there now that will make it good for using as a coaster with cold stuff but hot stuff I don't know if it will do as well you'd probably maybe want to stick with the outdoor stuff I don't know um, I'm not 100% sure on what you should use for hot stuff. I don't generally use my coasters for hot stuff. I just hold my coffee and drink it. <laughs> so anyway, so that is how you make faux leather. Get these little boxes at Hobby Lobby. They are a lot of fun. This is a banner that came from CD wood maybe I'm not really sure I had this a long time I don't really know where it came from um, but you know I like the leather look on the outside and then the focal points right there in the middle so get some play around with it tissue paper that's all you need a little bit of decoupage and um, pick your paints it's a lot of fun all right let's move on to the next technique Okay, this next little thing is more like a tip rather than a technique, but I thought it would be fun to share with you. Now, this is a painting that I did several years ago, and I have already varnished it. It's got two coats of satin varnish on it, but I really feel like my flower needs to be a brighter color for a hibiscus. I feel like it kind of is too muted. So, I'm going to take some Deco Art Fluid media fluid acrylic in quinacridone magenta and I'm gonna make just a little wash of this color I've already done it on two the two smaller petals or buds you can kind of see they're a little bit darker so I think I'm gonna put it over this now the good thing about uh, trying this out if you have painted something is once you varnish it if you do something like this and you don't like it then um, you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe and there'll be no harm done to it but I really feel like it needs a little bit more I want to try and stay off that yellow area there and get as close to it as I can so it's kind of beating up and I think that's because of the varnish that's on it bit more a little bit less water I'm going right over my highlights this is not going to hurt anything to just go right over the highlights and you can do this with any painting that you do as long as you have varnished it first and just give it a little extra pop of color it won't because I'm using just a wash of this color, I'll still retain my highlights on here, which is wonderful. But this is a trick that I learned several years ago. I don't know 
exactly how I learned it. If someone showed it to me or I just figured it out, but I've always thought it was a really good tip to have. So this is more of a tip than a technique, but I wanted to share it with you anyway. And I think it is brightening this up much better. I can go back down here and add some more. I just put a thin layer on this a little while ago. Wipe my brush off and now just take that and smooth it out. And then when this has completely dried, I can re-varnish it. I could brighten up my um, leaves as well. What a super fun way to brighten up everything. And then like I said, if you don't like it, baby wipe it away. I buy baby wipes by the cases from Sam's because I use them a lot here my studio. Okay, I think that looks so much better. Uh, it looks much brighter. I'm very happy with it. It's looking more like a hibiscus. I can let that dry and I can add another layer on there, but uh, that's a fun little technique that uh, I really wanted to show you. So actually it's a fun little tip I want to show you. So let's move on to the next technique. Okay, another thing that I was asked to uh, show how to do that uh, sometimes I forget that a lot of you um, don't know how to do this well or haven't practiced it enough, truthfully, Practicing this technique is going to be the most important thing because most people cannot get it right off um, and it is floating and I was specifically asked to show this one so I am going to show it and floating is the technique where you lay down a shadow or uh, shading or highlighting on something. I'm just going to put some more paint on this one because I've already put some other paint on it so I'll just continue uh, applying some to this. But loading your brush is the most important step in doing this technique. If you do not load your brush properly you cannot do this technique with any bit of success. You will become frustrated and um, then you will give up on it. And I don't want you to give up on it, I just want you to keep trying. So these areas are floated, everything that is dark behind here, this is floated, this is all floated here, a little bit of floating out here on these edges. But the most important thing is loading your brush. So. I am going to um, load my brush. I'm going to move all these bottles of paints out of the way here so I can bring my water basin over here and um, my palette. So one of the biggest tips that I can give you that I can find that helps me. Now every teacher teaches floating differently. You just find a technique that you can be successful at. Maybe it's a technique I'm going to show you, maybe it's a technique that another teacher has shown you, but just find the one that you can be successful at and use that technique. So what I'm going to show you is the way that I do it. So I always spritz water on my palette. I usually have a big flat palette. That is my clean water for floating. You don't ever want to use your muddied up dirty water, any water that has any kind of paint rinsed in it. Um, even if you think it's clear, it's not going to be clear uh, because it will put a cast shadow on your design and so it's literally just laying down paint all the way across instead of just creating that soft float. The second key tip that I can give you is you must condition your brush first. Okay. Now you can add a little bit of floating um, 
medium stuff into your into your water if you want. Um, you want to use clean water to condition your brushes. So I try to keep this one right here clean. <laughs> that one usually I wash in the big area over here. Then I rinse it in that area. And I try to keep this one clean, but I always have clean water right here if I need it, okay? So to condition your brushes, you need to get them in the water. I'll do it over here so you can see it. You need to get them in the water and let the bristles fill completely full. Um, I like to sometimes just push my bristles against the side. Let me bring it over here. Push my bristles against the side so every single one of those bristles get woke up they get water in them they get ready they get conditioned this is like a sponge if you use a sponge that is dry all that sponge is going to do is soak your paint right into it and it's not going to release any of it same thing with a brush if you use it dry completely dry unless you're dry rubbing it's not going to release any of the paint or hardly any of the paint out of it so you have to wake your brushes up let each bristle fill up completely with water and then you take it to your paper towel you lay it this side then you lay it this side and it has wicked out all of the excess moisture out of the brush so now the brush is damp but it's damp all the way through not just out on the out outside layers you can't just swish it in your water like that and say it's it's ready you can't do that just a little swish the outside bristles are ready but all the way through is not. So you really have to get the bristles soaked up and woke up and plump, okay? Lay it this way, lay it this way. You wanna make sure your ferrule is dry and now it's ready to paint for you. Now, floating, you can use any brush that you like. This is an angle brush. I didn't used to like to use angle brushes until I used this brand love this brush this is black silver by dynasty love their angle brushes I'm in love with them now where before I, I paint almost everything there's a couple of designs that I've done that I painted completely with just this brush I love it um, there is also this brush which is a soft curve which is uh, a company that made low Cornell used to make the uh, curved flat which I taught a lot of people to float with this brush because it, it really is helpful um, but um, the brush guys came out with the soft curve the bristles are a little bit softer than the brushes with for the low Cornell but it still works beautifully and then you can use a flat brush which uh, I love to use a flat brush as well I use a flat brush a lot in my floating um, so you get your brush woke up now let's learn how to load the brush. I'm going to darken some of the darker areas in here, so I'm going to do a mix of paint. This uh, mulberry is very thick. and So I'm going to grab some mulberry and some soft black, a little bit more soft black, and I'm mixing it right here. Now I can already see that my paint is coming way too far over on my brush, so I'm going to wash it out, lay it on my paper towel each side and then make sure my ferrule is dry. I don't want water rolling down as I paint and I'm going to start right here where that moisture is and then walk myself over to that mix. I need water in my brush and so instead of going over there and grabbing a drop, the brush was already wet, I'm, I just went right just this edge where the paint is going to be. I went into that water and walked it over to the paint so I could get to the paint. It still kept the paint just on that edge of the brush. Okay, so I'm going to load more. And you can feel as you're loading if your brush is dry um, because it kind of drags on your uh, palette. Um, if it's dragging at all, I feel like the paint side is dragging, but the water edge is good. So I'm going to get a little drop of water in the paint edge and work that in. When I come back and load my brush, I generally would go over here and grab a d drop of water on the water edge and come over and reload, as long as this is still wet. If it's not wet, I'm gonna get water across the whole edge of the brush and dip into my paint and create another blending area. Now, 
Another important tip is how it looks right here in your blending area is how it's going to paint. So you know it's going to lay down a nice, smooth, soft gradation float. If you load your brush just very quickly like this, all the, all the paint is on the edge. So you're going to lay down a hard, either very narrow line or a very thick hard line. And it's not going to have that great gradation of color. So you have to blend the water with your paint, both sides of your brush. Now you can do it back and forth like this, which I find difficult to do, but I do it like this. Do this side, and I flip my brush over and do this side. So like a little V. So my paint is really thick right there, so I'm going to start working my way out of that uh, pile of thick paint there, because I don't want a ton of paint on the tip of my brush. I always touch the tip to my paper towel, and if there's any extra on there, I can tell it's dry a little bit. Touch it. If there's any extra paint on the very tip, it will wick it away. And I need a little bit more soft black, so I'm going to grab that and blend that in. Touch my paper towel. And I want to darken more soft black. I want to darken these areas in here. I feel like, oh, I've got white off of my paper towel so that happens it's just paint take a damp brush and clean up so I want to darken in these areas so now when you're floating first of all if you've got it loaded correctly it's going to float so smoothly for you okay don't ever feel like you have to get your float in one long smooth float like if you've got a really long float, don't feel like you have to just work at it until it's one long smooth float. You can tap it along and then when you come back and repeat to darken, that will settle and smooth all that paint in there. Don't ever feel like you have to get it in one really long swoop. But you should apply soft pressure when you're floating if you're floating in a flat area, a long flat area, you want your brush to be flat. Lay it flat, nice soft pressure, and you will get a beautiful float in there, okay? Um, don't have it up like this. The only time you want it tilted, maybe on the toe of the brush, is when you're going into a really small area that you want to put some paint in, so you can tuck some in there and use the water edge and smooth that out a little bit. Floating is really a learned skill and you have to take time to condition your brush, load your brush. You got to understand how your brush feels in your hand. If it feels even remotely dry, then you have to go get some water. So I'm just darkening up a few areas in here. Very soft pressure with my brush. I'm creating a few darker shadows on this one. I felt like it needed just a few more. Now these areas right here are called uh, V areas. I call them V. Some people call them triangles. But when you get to those, it is important how you float them. You have to take the tip of your brush and push the paint into that area, okay? And then you're going to start bringing it out, and as you come out of that V, you're going to round that float. Give it a nice, soft rounding. And that is going to keep that a nice, rounded area and help form the shape of whatever you're painting, and it won't be just a V in there. This needs to come up to here. Separate those two a little bit. So I'm going to grab a little bit more paint on my brush. Mulberry, a little bit of water. I grabbed a drop of water first. Too much water, so I'm going to wipe it off. Get some more mulberry and go right back here. If your paint ever gets more than 
but you, you it can get up to halfway depending on how big your float is but if it gets over halfway you're just base coating so just wash it out and reload it and then I'm going to go into this little triangle here these dark little areas kind of up on the toe in these smaller tighter areas I'm going to put a little bit more down in there here and add a little bit kind of up on the toe just kind of softly scrubbing that in I always keep the wet side of my brush without paint so if I get out of lines I can quickly clean that up super easy to do okay I hope the floating part made sense um, I want to show you how to walk something out though. Let's see if I can do it here on my plate. Well, maybe I can do it on this scrap piece here. So I'm going to wash my brush out. Get all that paint out of there. And I'm going to load it. Remember, your brush is conditioned. If you're using your brush, um, it's already conditioned. So just rinse it out, lay it on your paper towel, each side on the paper towel, and let it wick out the water. I'm going to load with the soft black here. A little bit too much water on the paint edge. A little more paint. Even though I'm pushing hard with my brush to load it, it's still only loading that much of the brush. Okay? Don't let it get too far over. Okay, I'm going to get a little drop of water. Blend, blend, blend. When you pick up water or paint, you blend. Touch your paper towel the, just barely to wick out. And then as you paint your color, see that nice soft gradation? You're laying water down on this edge. So I can walk this over as far as I want to and get that nice soft float until I pretty much run out of paint. And then you can always take if that's the only float that you're going to do, you can always, it won't do it too well on this um, mat board, but you can always take your mop brush and gently soften and blend that out. If it's super wet, you can't use the mop brush because it's going to lift your paint off. So let it dry just a little bit lightly. Stipple over it and smooth it out. You want to use a dry brush. Don't ever use it wet. If you get paint in it, then you go to a a wet spot on your paper towel that preferably doesn't have paint in it and clean it off. Super easy to clean. So that is how we do our floating um, and shading and highlighting is done the same way. Um, I'll just put a oops I'll just put a quick little white highlight on this little tree here. I probably showed how to do that earlier. So I've got my brush loaded and I'm just going to float a little highlight on this edge out here. Come across it just a little bit. You have your brush loaded right and it's painting well for you. You can go a long ways with a little bit of paint that's in your brush. Okay. I hope that explained uh, floating for you with shading and highlighting and um, that it wasn't too difficult to understand. But if it was, please um, ask any questions you need to. I'd be happy to answer them and tell you how I do it. But like I said, every teacher teaches their own way and does it their own way. But for me, clean water on your palette, condition your brush, two most important things to get your brush loaded properly. I hope you have enjoyed this techniques video and if you have any questions at all about anything on it please let me know. I'll see you on the next one everybody. Bye bye.